First question is from Jamie Mendez PR. How can you progress using body weight training and still make gains? This is actually a good question because I'd say the challenge with body weight resistance training is, is, is exactly that. Like, how do you progressively it's load the, part. the body? How do I increase the resistance when my body weight is no longer sufficient? It's for the exercise, right? It's only, I think it's it's only a difficult question when you, you think of it in the context of progressive overload is always adding more weight. Mm -hmm. There's many ways that you could progressively overload the body without, and we we did a whole episode, by the way, dedicated to this. I think it was like called like nine, many, nine, many nine different way, ways. To, I think it was like nine way, nine different ways to progressively overload the body, something like that. Maybe Doug could look it up while we're talking, but that that's why this seems uh, like a difficult uh, problem is like oh god well i can't what am i gonna do keep wearing sandbags it's like you don't have to overload the body all the time with that here's one slow down yeah. slow down the tempo Way down slow the tempo down or incorporate isometrics do mm -hmm. a, do do slow down the tempo pause at the bottom and hold for five seconds uh increase the reps yep. at speed go something that's uh explosive right and so there's a lot of different ways that you can it overload change the, body. the angle get more gravitational forces working against you that's right um yeah so you do have to get a bit creative it seems because it's not just like um just adding a load is going to go ahead and um you provide that that type of uh, progressive overload you have to get you have to work with the other acute variables, the other factors there, tempo, um, you know, it, intensity with, um, you know, like holding in, like you mentioned with the isometric training and with, um, you know, difficulty that way. Yeah. I, I, I do want to, I, I want to add something else though, because I think that's part of it, but I don't think that's the main thing, actually. I'm going to disagree a little bit. Uh, not that you guys are wrong or totally right, but I think the big one is that most people don't know more than the basic calisthenic exercise or body weight exercise. So people know push-ups, pull-ups, you know, sit-ups, lunges, but they don't realize that like with a pair of rings, there's a whole bunch of very, very challenging, high tension, mm -hmm. high resistance body weight exercises that you could do. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of them. So I would say like, okay, yes, there's your traditional exercises and yes, you could progress those. Like I could go from a body weight squat to like a pistol squat, for example, uh, which dramatically increases the load, right? I could do push-ups elevated, bring them all the way down to the floor, maybe even elevate my feet. Like that's one way to do it. But you grab a pair of rings, which are very inexpensive, or you could use just suspension, you know, trainers, which are very similar. And now you've opened up a whole plethora of different yeah. exercises where you can really make the resistance high and advanced I mean, look at uh, yeah, look at gymnastics. Yes. I mean, that's probably your best example of how they figured out how to um, make the intensity increase the intensity and also like progress you into uh, moves that you couldn't achieve before. So you know now I can I can do a muscle up. Yeah, you know, just from uh, starting off being able to do good pull ups to where I could get, you know, my body up higher and higher or get like, uh, you know, ring dips where I have to go super low so I can work on all the transitions, mm -hmm. which then builds strength to then accomplish even new feats. So I, I really think this is just a, it's an, a lack of understanding how you can overload the body because I see this even forget body weight. This is a question that I think the average lifter gets and their their answer always is. A different machine or adding load all the time to yeah. it, but there's, I mean, you could keep squat, push up, body body row or pull up, and 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 manipulate that so many different That's ways true. to keep overloading the body. You don't even need to get creative. You don't need mm -hmm. to go do any crazy exercises. You can incorporate, like I was saying, isometrics in there. You can incorporate tempo. You can incorporate plyometrics and explosiveness. Pausing. You combine some of those variables, like. All I mean, you could literally not mess with the handful of body weight exercises and just manipulate all those variables and continue to see results in the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I think that's the problem is because I see this even with people that have the gym membership and have access to all the equipment. We always think that, oh, they get stronger and, you know, I got to just keep adding weight to the bar. And that's not true. Yeah. I mean, you make a really good point yeah. uh, because at some point, even with traditional free weights, the answer is not to add more weight, right? At some point, the risk versus rewards, you know, ratio starts to become a little bit not so great. Like when I was squatting 150 pounds for 10 reps, and that was a real intense set for me, going up to 160 and then 170, like that's, there's a lot of reward to risk, right? Once you get up to, for me at least, once I got up to 350, 400 or more, I could add 10 more pounds if I'm stronger, 
But now the risk versus reward ratio doesn't look the same. Now if my form's off a little bit, which sometimes it is, my chance of, of injury goes up. So now, you know, if, once you get to a certain level, you're going to have to That's right, diminishing look at all, you're going to have to look at all these different things. Like, uh, yeah, you could add 10 pounds to your 600 pound deadlift, but you might be better off slowing down, pausing, doing, you know, changing the way that you do the lift to make it more challenging. Here's something that really good lifters know how to do. They can take an exercise that they could do for 15 reps to failure and they can fail at five reps mm -hmm. if they wanted to. Just by changing the feel and the squeeze. Mm -hmm. I did this today, you know, doing pull-ups. I think if I go max out pull-ups and just rep them out, I can get close to 20. But if I really stretch, really I mean, squeeze. Ten hell hard. Yeah. You squeeze your body like yeah. super hard doing these, making like a more intense, like full body tension yep. workout out of yep. it. You can do a lot to these exercises. Yeah. So you just got to get creative with some of that stuff. Isometrics is a big one. I tell you what, like, especially if you have something that's immo Im like immovable, like if you have chains attached to the ground or something and you're driving against that like the force you generate is the force you generate you get stronger you just generate more force as long as the chains hold steady you're progressively overloading every time you do a max effort with isometrics and that's a very overlooked uh part of resistance training nobody you know isometrics i believe in the future is going to make a resurgence like everything old that's good yeah. does and people are going to rediscover the value of it and you need almost no equipment to do it in fact with intrinsic tension you need no equi no equipment at all but if you're more advanced, like I said, you could use something immovable, which is requires so little space, and you get tremendous benefits. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.